and today we're going to be talking about what does it really take to create abundance in your life and we're going to have a good time together the more interactive the better i love having conversations where we just um we see where the conversation goes like i said i have some slides but it's pretty casual but you're in the right place if you are ready to create more opportunities in your life and want to feel more abundance. And you're also realizing that what you're doing now is not working, at least not as well as you'd like it to. Uh, there's some reasons for that. I think that it's pretty natural. Most people feel that way. So I, I don't think that... Um, what I've found is most people can brush up on the things that we're going to be talking about today. And there's a great deal of, of um, meaning to the things that we'll be, we'll be diving into. And what I put here is you're tired of the status quo. You, there may be a sense that you've plateaued, that you're noticing something happening over and over again, but you're not being able to break the pattern. And that is, a really good thing to notice because what I found is this work is very, very helpful in breaking those stuck patterns. And so today we're going to cover a grounding meditation. We'll do that just to get started. We'll talk about abundance. Um, where is it to be found? Why do we struggle in finding it? Talk about money shadows and why money shadows matter and are so helpful to learn more about. And then we'll do a meditation that actually helps us look at our money shadows, bring something to mind. And, um, and I think that you'll find that very interesting to explore. And then we will talk about next steps. So that is pretty much it. Um, let's go ahead and like I said, do a grounding meditation. And the reason we do those, if you're new to this, is that Mm. Oftentimes in our busy lives, we just dart from one thing to the next and we deal with things that we don't want to be dealing with and avoidance and resistance. And before you know it, we can become very ungrounded. The way that we know that we're ungrounded is maybe we're bumping into things, we're, we're finding that our thoughts are scattered, we're getting um, a sense of, of difficulty and focusing on projects. And so when we come in and do, I, I like to always start my workshops with a brief grounding meditation because it allows us to just get really present to what we're talking about and connect in with our bodies more. So going ahead and taking a nice deep breath, you can imagine that that breath starts in your belly and goes all the way to the crown of your head. And as you breathe in, you may even notice that your posture straightens and you get really aware of how you're holding your body. And then when you relax, just letting it go. And when you release, you surrender into the chair beneath you. Your feet may be planted on the ground or if you're sitting in lotus posture, just noticing the touching of your body to the ground. You can imagine there's a cord that goes from the base of your spine down into the dirt beneath you, into the earth and the rocks and the soil and the water and the roots and mixing. And noticing as that happens that you become very present to your body awareness. And just breathe into that for a moment. And perhaps taking a moment to set an intention for why you were drawn to this call today, what's called to you, what you're interested in exploring, what you'd like more of, what you'd like less of, and allowing it to set an intention through this understanding. Another nice deep breath, and then you can bring yourself back in to the space. 
<sighs> so I thought that I would give you just a little background about me in case you're new to my work and the things that I do. I already mentioned that I live in Sedona, Arizona. We've lived here for a couple years. Before that, we spent some time in Hawaii, and, and before that, we lived in the Lake Tahoe um, on the border of California and Nevada for about 16 years. Um, I have been teaching mindfulness and meditation practices for since like 2003, and I've been working with money and uh, working in the money business, running my business, Wealth Clinic. Uh, back to the early 90s. And so I'm a certified financial planner. I have an MBA in finance. I am really good with money and helping people with money. But my true passion is the integration of the material world into the spiritual world and how we can be living in the world but not be of it. And what that means is it, per, is it pertains to our money, to our businesses, and to all of our life. I am a mom to two children. Uh, my son is 13, still at home, and my daughter's in college. She's 20. I um, have been married to my husband for 26 years and together since college. So uh, this is my life's work, what I'll be sharing with you. I'm deeply passionate about it, and I feel incredibly blessed to be able to work every single day in some capacity uh, along the lines that we're going to be talking about. Like, I can't believe that this is what I get paid to do. It's incredible and nothing like setting an intention because I think many years ago it would have been my dream, but I don't know that I really believed that it was possible. And now I get to do it every day. I coach entrepreneurs, primarily people who or any, at any stage in their business up to about 500,000 in revenue. Um, some clients are larger than that, but I'm not doing as much business coaching for them as I am around the inner work. I focus on doing the inner work first and then the business work second, meaning I truly believe and I've witnessed the fact that when we get really, really clear on who we are and what's important to us and, you know, following our passion and gaining clarity in our awareness that the work that we do becomes really easy. And so I am not a business coach who's teaching people how to get uh, more willpower and just, you know, move through the resistance. I'm teaching people how to break out of the resistance so that, that they don't have to deal with the resistance in their business. Um, you know, I want to start by just saying that abundance is your birthright. Uh, that is something that has taken me many years to fully understand and to integrate into my teachings. In fact, I didn't teach about abundance until just like the past year and a half because I was not experiencing it in my own life. So I wasn't going to teach about it until I really started to understand that what I now teach is it is it is who we are. It is what we are here to experience. The problem is, is that we have all this stuff, all this noise that tells us that it isn't who we are. And so the job that I have is not to teach people what abundance is. It's more of how to drop away the stuff that prevents us from seeing the abundance that we ourselves are and have always been. And so I do not teach about, you know, saying things over and over again, affirmations, they may be fine, but they're not something I teach about. Uh, I really like to get into the nitty gritty of like what causes you to see something other than abundance, not just telling yourself to stop seeing what you're seeing, for example. I also know that, um, that this work and what we'll be talking about is something that anyone can do. I continue to get this reinforced over and over again that my goal in the work that I've created is to make it accessible to anyone, whether they have a mindfulness practice or they don't, uh, 
the idea is to make it really simple that anyone can follow it and that it would lead to big um, shifts in somebody's awareness by doing it. I love this quote, happiness is your nature. It is not wrong to desire it. What is wrong is seeking it outside when it is inside. And that's by Sri Ramana Mahar Maharsh Rishi. <laughs> I gotta love those words. So like I said, I wanted to talk about abundance and there were three things that really rose to the top in this, in this conversation um, that I, I think can help to um, hopefully open up discussions. So, you know, one of you can um, you can write on on the chat, or you can take yourself off of mute, whatever you wish. But we'll just dive into these. The three are where your attention, where you focus, your attention goes. Um, that's the next, the first one that we'll be talking about. The next one is what you accept and believe is what you actually deserve, or you think that you deserve. And then the third one is that we are more often than not programmed to live our life in a very closed way. Like we have a lot of reinforcement around being able to protect ourselves, to keep ourselves safe. And what I found is that in the time that we're trying to protect ourselves, we're also shutting out the possibility of, of abundance. And so I'll dive into these in a little bit more detail. The first one was where you focus your attention on is what grows in your life. And so I have the question here, what are you focusing on in your life? I ask this question because what I've noticed is that oftentimes we're focused on the things that we don't want to have happen. And when they do happen, they consume all of our attention. And so we get very myopic in living a life of focus on all the things that we don't want but the big shift comes when we start thinking about abundance is through the ability to gain awareness of what we're focused on, not just big picture, but moment by moment by moment. And so the more we're able to understand and be aware of where our attention is, the greater chance we have to build up abundance in our lives, whether that be materially or spiritually, and we'll talk more about that later. So, um, so the big question to explore is, is, where is your attention now? And maybe just ask yourself that and think for a second. And right, all of us do this. We all get very, um, you know, there's all the things happening in politics and in uh, the media and all this noise that we're exposed to, you know, with our phones and with, um, with the computer and the internet and the te television programs. And what we could almost do is like almost journal if we are curious because we're not quite sure where our attention is focused, but we may like chronicle a day of how much time did I spend focusing on what? Because what I've seen again and again is this is the big pivotal moment when you decide that you are going to focus on creating exactly what you want for yourself. So if you've been hanging out for a little while with me, you may have come across the Wealth Flower exercise. The whole point of that exercise, which you can get on wealthclinic.com on the first page, you can um, sign up to get it downloaded. The reason that's so powerful is that I've seen in my own life and in others' lives that we spend far too little time focused on knowing what our true desires are. And instead we're responding to life as it's coming into us. And by not focusing on our desires and not focusing on what we really, really, really want, 
we don't bring it into reality. We don't take big enough steps, action steps to bring it into reality. And so the wealth flower is meant to ask you questions again and again. And I go back to that exercise and so do my clients again and again, because it will change over time. What you wanted a year ago is going to shift based on, you know, your awareness, your life circumstances and so forth, but staying really in tune with your deepest desires and then focusing on them. I like to do it in meditation. This is a big part of uh, my infinite abundance program is teaching people how to change what they're focused on every single day so that their life is moving in the direction they want. Any questions or comments or thoughts about that? It makes sense. So at any time you can just take yourself off of mute if you'd like. The next one is what you accept and believe is what you deserve. So again, we do not realize just how powerful we are to change what we're bringing in to our lives. We are ultimately creative beings. We have limitless potential to create things that we want. Now, I'm really into human design, if you're familiar with it. It says that the idea is, is that we all have different ways that we actually create or that we manifest, which is fine. And, and I love knowing, the more I know about myself, the more I can adapt my style and my, um, the way I show up in my business according to some aspects of myself. But at the end of the day, you've got to actually believe that you deserve to receive something. And so a lot of times I'll talk about permission because I, I notice with my clients again and again that they're not giving themselves permission to be living the life that they want to live. And the reason they're not giving themselves permission is they don't believe that they actually deserve that. Now, their head tells them, I deserve that, but there's a subconscious belief system that says I don't deserve it. And more often than not, that deservingness goes way back to childhood and, and very um, sometimes peculiar things that happened to us at the time when we were little and we didn't have the kind of frame of reference that we do consciously now, we would store these things away into thinking that we were um, you know, bad in some way and not undeserving or, um, you know, selfish or greedy or what have you. And so the, the deal is, is the more we can pay attention and release this idea that we're anything less than perfection and abundance, the more we open ourselves up to the possibility, which brings me to the next one that I wanted to touch on. And this is about being open or closed. I've noticed that, you know, life has a way of beating us down, right? Things happen. I mean, maybe not for you, but for me, for a lot of people I know when, you know, you, things seem to be going well and then you get some news and, you know, your car breaks down or you find out that you're, you know, a client's not going to work with you anymore. I mean, the list is exhausting of all the surprises that we get, especially as it pertains to money. And so what can happen is after a while, it's like one thing happens and another thing happens. And after a while, we start to notice very unconsciously, I think, and that's why I'm bringing it to the surface, we're kind of closed down in, in, in protection mode. We're trying to protect ourselves from any more bad stuff happening. The problem is, is that the same time that we're closing things out to keep ourselves safe, we're also not open to receiving. And this is a fascinating thing because I've, I've noticed again and again that if I wasn't conscious of the fact that you can only receive what you have the capacity to receive, that 
I would make the same mistake over and over again, which was head into something that, that I was needing to show up in a very open way, but in reality, I was showing up in a very closed way. And so the, the thing about abundance is that we, our consciousness, our awareness of how we're holding ourselves, how we're holding our energy, our you know, physical body, our attitude, the more we um, were able to shift it in the moment to a more expansive, uh, more abundant way of being. So again, I want to check in. Um, welcome. I'm so glad you're joining us. Uh, any questions or comments about what I just shared? You can put them in the chat. Thanks so much for being here. I hope this is helpful and it's making sense. Hmm. Okay. So in summary, everything comes down to your attention, your beliefs, and to your openness to shifting towards abundance. So if you can look at what you're doing with your mind and what you're paying attention to, what kind of beliefs do you have about abundance? And then finally, are you open to receiving? Then once you bring those three, three things together, your life starts to shift in miraculous ways. And like I said, I've, I've not witnessed anyone who has not applied these things, especially when you, when you do them through mindfulness practices. So the reason mindfulness practices are so applicable is we have a whole bunch of habits that we are stuck in right now, right? We just do them over and over again. And so when we start to meditate and start to use repetition in our mind, we build up you know, slowly but surely, we build up the prefrontal cortex in, in our brain, and we're able to be more diligent in catching our mind as it goes through the day. So when we're more mindful through, you know, building up our ability to meditate, for example, the better able we are to respond to life as it's happening. And so I'm noticing a chat says, can you shift unconscious beliefs if you aren't aware of them? So good. Uh, you can. Um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. So actually, that ties really well into, into the shadow discussion because, because that is actually what shadows are all about is, is this whole, um, un, if you aren't aware of them. So the first answer is no, it's very difficult to shift beliefs if you're not aware of them. It happens, it happens every so once in a while, but I think in the times that we're living in, if we were to just wait for it to happen, it's probably not gonna happen as fast as what we're wanting to have happen in comparison to the life, the life that we're living. So, you know, we've got things coming at us so quickly and we're making, you know, decisions moment by moment and we're, we're probably setting pretty high expectations for ourselves. So I don't think that that works very well is the point. <laughs> I think it's a lot better to start to become more aware of the unconscious beliefs than anything. And, and this is why the shadow work that we're going to talk about is, is so powerful. So, um, I, I mentioned that I was going to be talking about uh, some workshops that I've got coming up, but, but what I'm going to do is just tell you kind of an overview of the money shadows as well as how to move through the money shadows. Because there's two parts and they're not something um, that uh, you, can, you can put them all together, but I decided that it's far more powerful to actually get a really strong understanding of money shadows and then dive into how do you release them. So it's like a two-part process. And let's start by talking about the money shadows. So first of all, we have shadows. Uh, you know, this is, I kind of summarize this and I don't know if it applies all the time, but I think a lot of our shadows we have them because we're not being completely honest with ourselves. And what that means is, is there are problems and challenges and difficulties that we're dealing with in life? And we just would rather that they go away rather than looking inside of them. So that's where we're not being totally honest with ourselves. 
for example, uh, sometimes um, I pulled this one up. Uh, we say that we want to do, we want to like work for free. I hear this sometimes. Like people are like, I just want to give it away for free. I just want to, you know, help lots of people and give it away for free. And yet when we don't have the money coming in for the things that we want in our life, we're wondering, well, where's the money? You know, like it's, it's like, when we're consciously looking at this right now, we, we're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. But the problem is, is that we do these things in our life. And, and sometimes there's a whole bunch of people doing them at the same time. And the more we kind of stand together, we think, well, this is just the way it's done. But other times we have very unique, peculiar behaviors that our friends don't really understand, or they have do things that they do with money that we don't understand. And the point is, is that we, we notice the, the whole shadow is about noticing in this particular case that we've been giving so much and have re been, re and we're not receiving anything financially back in return. Uh, but, and that there's a reason for that. But, but the shadow, on the other hand, is a part, it's, it's a part of you that's waiting to be fully seen, heard, and loved. When ignored, it has the power to sabotage your life and keep you from, from fulfilling your dreams. This part of you, hidden deep inside of your consciousness, was coined and developed by um, Swiss psychologist Jung. He believed that the shadow is the unknown dark side of the personality. And I have a long-standing relationship with discovering my shadows. And, and what's cool about shadows is oftentimes by hearing other people talk about their shadows or hearing examples of them, it will bring up things for our own selves. One of the places, and I think it might be in this next slide, to be able to understand what our shadows are and how they're affecting us, we need to keep an open mind and we need to walk through what I found is guided instruction is really powerful and real-time discussion because the mind is really tricky. And when you start to go down the shadow path, the mind is like right there, one step ahead of you almost, like trying to keep you from going down that path because the ego is not wanting to be um, challenged or told that it's wrong. And so it gets kind of messy and it's kind of hard to figure it out on your own. But one of the best ways to start looking at the areas where you are struggling with a money shadow is paying attention to where you're projecting judgments on other people about money. Super amazing because all you have to do in this moment is think about someone who irritates you as it pertains to money. So it could be a public figure, it could be your sister-in-law, it could be your brother, it could be a parent, child. All you need is um, something that really gets under your skin, that really triggers you. And you, you go from you know, feeling fine, and then that moment you hear about it or you see them do it, you're like, I'm not fine anymore. So, okay, let's see if you've if you brought something up, hopefully you have. I think we can all find something. So my st one of my stories with, with Money Shadows was several years ago when I first started my company, there was a person, this work around money has is, is evolved quite a bit in the past four years. But when I first started, there were just a few people out there talking about this stuff. And one of the people was very high profile. And people would say to me, oh, you're like that person who's written you know, this very famous book. And, and I did not like this person. Like I had read the book, it made me cry, but not in a good way. I just saw the person as a very manipulative, deceitful person. And it really got under my skin because people, because this is the other thing with shadows is these people just keep showing up again and again. And you're like, wait a minute, you know, why can I not just run away and get away from this? But sure enough, every so often somebody would say, well, aren't you doing just like what he's doing? And I was like, absolutely not. There's just no possible way. And finally, 
<laughs> I could tell that I was so irritated in a conversation one day. I was like, you know, that's not really healthy. And I'm not really portraying myself very well as I start this business when I get so irritated that this person is coming up. And so I, I knew about it, but I still wasn't sure I was going to do anything with it. It just became very aware that I had a problem, but I didn't know what to do with it. And I think I didn't even know at that time what money shadows were. And so I ended up working with a coach and there was a recording that I was listening to while I was driving down the road one day and, and she was going to take us through this, this shadow work and she started asking questions. And the first one was, you know, um, who's somebody who irritates you, you know, with money? And I was like, oh, it's him, you know, and, and the next question, so you can ask this to yourself was, um, so why does that person bother you so much? And I'm driving along and all of a sudden I was like, well, the reason he bothers me so much is he is a greedy SOB. And I was like, kind of shocked that that came out of me because that really, I, yeah, I was like, yeah, that's how I feel. And so then the next question was, so how does being, why are you so afraid of this of this, this trait that he's showing you, you know, for me, greed. And the minute I felt into that, I was toast. Like it clicked in my mind that all of my life, as far back as I could remember, I had been living in fear of being a greedy person. The backstory was that my parents were really bad with money, but I was really good with it. And my brother was also pretty bad with it. So they would come to me and I'd be like, I was like a Fort Knox bank and they'd want my money. And I'd be like, you can't have it. And I worked really hard for this. And, and they would call me greedy and selfish. And I believed them because I didn't have anything to compare it to. I believed that I was a greedy person. And then, you know, here we are 40 years later and I'm realizing that I've been living in this shadow of being a greedy person for my whole life. And it broke open. And as it broke open, I cried, I sobbed, and I could feel how that story was no longer serving me. And it was time for me to let it go. And there was more to it, but, I'll, but suffice to say, here's the crazy part about this whole story is that was like in August of um, the first year I started my company, 2014. Six months later, I get an email from this person and his team saying that he wants to meet with me and would like to explore how we could work together. And I was like, what? Wait, this is a joke, right? You know, because that's like not reasonable. Like I just started out. It doesn't make any sense. But what I'm why I'm sharing this with you. And we ended up meeting up and we had many different connections and different things that we, we did together. But the point is, is that when we heal these shadows, miracles happen in our life that we could not see the potential of what was possible until they come down and they're released. And we don't just have one shadow. We have a whole bunch of shadows. And so the more I can teach people how to learn about this and integrate it, the freer I know these people who are interested are going to be. It's just that powerful. It does not take a lot of awareness to shift your understanding. And by getting some background and some knowledge about your money shadows uh, combined with this other work, which I mentioned, um, so I kind of gave you that example, is is around releasing it. So what I mentioned is I've got this workshop coming up, when is it, February 15th um, in the morning. It's a Tuesday. It's also going to be recorded, uh, but it will be very interactive and there will be questions and comments and discussion happening. But the goal is to, to teach everyone and really solidify the understanding of what are the shadows, what are some of the shadows you're holding on to, how they're working in your life. And then, and then also I want to take you through a, a model because what I found is that these shadows, the longer they remain hidden from us, the more tweaking and turning and manipulating we do in our life to support them, which sounds totally twisted, but it's true. And so if you, if you can 
pay attention to the different stages that a shadow goes through where it morphs and shifts over the time that you're alive, as long as it stays alive, you may notice nuances of certain shadows that don't really make sense of why they're still with you, but you can see the um, evolution of the shadow in, in your own life. And by being aware of it, I promise you, the minute you gain awareness, then you're able to shift into this learning how to release your you know, shadows, your blocks, whatever you want to call them. They're all the same thing at the end of the day, the blocks, the obstacles, the things that keep you in the patterns. Um, and this work is very different than the shadow work. So once you know and you use the shadow to identify where you're stuck, we move into a process that's very feeling-based where I've created a template that I walk people through and you get a copy of the template and you're using it during the workshop. These, both these workshops are like 90 minutes long. The idea is, is by the time you're done with the workshop, you're able to notice the shadows and pull out the worksheet whenever they appear and move yourself through it. And you can use this work for your friends, your family, your children, your spouse, whoever's willing to try it with you. So it's very inspired by a collection of different mentors and teachers, Byron Katie, uh, Holly Riley, other teachers that I've studied with, and I've kind of combined it all together to ask a series of questions that allow you to heal yourself so that you're not having to necessarily work with a coach. Um, my goal is to work myself out of a job so that people can do this work without, without um, needing me to be the one helping them to do that. And, and you know, I do these private um, money breakthrough sessions and I charge $600 and it lasts a few hours and it's pretty exhaustive work because I've got to understand someone's life story themes so that I can go into the stories and understand where did the shadow get created? Well, you know your life a lot better than I do. So if I can teach you how to look and where to look, then I know with quite strong certainty that you're going to be able to do this work on your own. And, and I've been teaching people how to do this for a while. I've just never brought it all together in the way that I'm trying, that I'm, that I'm doing here. So uh, I've just done it more, um, you know, with my one-on-one -on -one clients. And then I started to teach some of these uh, releasing your money blocks workshops. But, but what I found is if we didn't go into the shadows of people like you, um, had asked, how can you shift them if you don't know? It's pretty tough. So I realized I needed the shadow work before the releasing work. So that's how I've set it up. I think February 15th is the, is the first workshop and then the 20th is the second one. And again, they're recorded. The other thing, so let's see. So, oh, this is interesting. My workshops are perfect for you if you're ready for big breakthroughs, you're tired of having to work incredibly hard for your money without feeling satisfied. You're ready to roll up your sleeves and do the work and face the uncomfortable in order to make your business or your life more successful. And then you like meeting like-minded people and, and feeling a sense of, of community support, which is a really big part of what I do. And it's not so good if you sit back and want someone to do it for you. Even in the work that I do with my clients one-on-one, -on -one, they are just as involved as I am and they have to be really, really wanting the changes. So um, it's not for people if you don't want to, if you can't stand the thought of diving into your personal backstories, um, even if positive transformation is a result. Sometimes people don't want to do that. I totally get it. So what I've done is I'm putting these two workshops together, uh, and it's in conjunction with something I'm doing for, I mentioned in my note, if you, you may have seen, I had 550 people participating in a money challenge and they have been invited to attend these workshops. And I just decided, well, I'll invite people outside of that 550 who did the mindfulness um, work this past month. And they are having the opportunity to do it for $147, both of them. And so I'm extending that to anyone who listens to this. It's just, it's only good until February the 7th. So that's this February. I mean, this, that's this Tuesday. <laughs> I also wanted to show you a little bit more about infinite abundance because that's sort of like the backbone. So I'm going to try and figure out how to, let's see. So 
pulling this up on the screen. Um, Infinite Abundance is a program that kind of like, the best way I can describe it is like a wrapper. So when I first started talking, we were talking about mindfulness and meditation and how can we get more control over our minds so that we're able to make the shifts around abundance. And I created this program about a year and a half ago. I ended up just doing this challenge this past month. Um, people from all over the world participated. They had huge breakthroughs as a result. I think I shared some of that with you in the email that I sent the other day. But what I wanted to do was just show you, um, or I can tell you, cause I know you can't see, not everybody can see this, but um, this program is a, it's broken into essentially four weeks and each of the weeks are meant to teach you mindfulness practices that allow you to clear out the stuff that is holding you back, gain awareness of the money baggage, the shadows. So it's kind of, I think when you think of money shadow work combined with infinite abundance, as you loosen the knots, so imagine it's like a ball of yarn, infinite abundance starts to soften and loosen the tightness of the mind. And the, it, it makes you more pliable, more open, more interested in possibilities. So as you loosen that, then the shadow work becomes a lot more effective because you know yourself all the better you are understanding some of these patterns that you've been living with money all your life and that you're really tired of and you're ready to let go of. And so the first week is about clearing things out. The second week is about diving into the individual chakras because that's a very big part of infinite abundance is it's teaching you about the things that you're holding onto in each of the chakras. The third week is when I think it gets really exciting because that's when you learn how to start to um, expand and open even when you're having a tendency to be closed. So the meditations are teaching you how to expand your awareness very beautifully, very lovingly, so that you're able to open up the ability to receive, create greater capacity to receive, receive you know, windfalls, receive um, teachings, receive uh, love and companionship. You know, it's whatever you're wanting to receive more of. It's teaching you how to do that very consciously. And then the last week is all about becoming the creator of the life that you want to live. And so it's teaching you, um, there's a lot of journaling and questions and meditations that are specific again to each of the chakras that you're doing them one a day. Some of the meditations are as short as five minutes. Um, there's a meditation for every single day. Some of them are as long as maybe 15 minutes. So that's the range. But by the end of the month, you, what I, I am hearing from people is it's like my whole entire life is different. I'm seeing things in a completely new way. And I'm able to get along with people better. I'm able, I've gotten new clients as a result. I'm showing up in a more powerful way in the world. I'm realizing that I'm not shrinking anymore. Like the list is pretty amazing of the things that happen, but this, this program has been re over, like reworked about five times now where I just keep improving it, improving it. And when all these people showed up, which was kind of a miracle to me, when all these people showed up to do the, the challenge together last month, I really got pushed. Like I had a lot of breakdown to breakthroughs to be able to hold the space for that many people and support their growth and, and feel capable of supporting their growth. And so as I was opening up, I was able to channel that into a series of new meditations that are a part of the program. And so this is actually included, um, the meditations, the daily emails, the, there's hours and hours of workshops around these themes that are embedded in the program. Um, a journaling uh, book, and um, there's 
so many different things. Uh, and then the courses. So it's all together. It's $147 until Tuesday. And after that, it'll be $247. But the classes will be um, recorded at that moment. So that's what I've got going. Let's see. I'll go back and see what I've got here. Um, any questions or comments? Hmm. Has this has this conversation, you know, does it make sense? It's always interesting when you're trying to take something that you're, it's like your life's work and condense it into a few minutes. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm great at that, but I'm trying. I feel like this has been a better job than I've done in the past. So <laughs> any questions or comments? Is this work interesting to you? Is it something that you've been looking for or curious about in the past? I don't follow any one person's um, methodology. It's only through my own experience, you know, my experiential learning that all of this has been developed. Um, so, and it's very, very unique. Uh, and the breakthroughs that I've been having people see through Infinite Abundance this past month are every bit as big as things that have happened with me coaching people for years, which has been um, a big, a big uh, surprise and welcome surprise because this is what I think I've always wanted. It was to be able to help people in this way. And, and with the workshops, they're live. I'll be there guiding you through them. But again, they'll be a lot more interactive and discussion oriented because um, that's just how all the classes that I typically teach go. So do you have any questions or comments? Thank you, thanks for that note. I am not one who does that fake it till you make it until I see a lot of um, success and experience uh, with things, then you know, I, I just wait until I have that because it's really important to me to have results and see people having big shifts in their lives as a result of the work that I do. So thank you so much for being here. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Feel free to send me questions offline if, you, if anything occurs to you. And I guess that's it for now.